it's all got to start somewhere. I think it all started with a miduk, and that led to all that happened. Well, I think I should maybe say a lot more than that, or it's going to be a pretty poor story. Well, during this time, I started to like and subscribe to channels on my phone and engaging more. It was this way I one day happened upon a channel from Derbyshire. I commented on a post and, well, I got a reply. And, uh, well, it turned into a bit of conversation on the actual chat. Um, I quite enjoyed it and it had been quite nice to speak to someone quite like-minded rather than um, anyone in my antibike household. Over time I'd got on with one person called Paulie650. He was very knowledgeable and I felt quite a decent chap. Um, over the summer we met up a few times and I invited him to the house and we all soon became friends. Soon after I attempted the 125 Lands End to Jana Groats trip and well we all know how that one ended. After the trip in the car to, to Edinburgh with the kids and the failure of my Le Jog attempt um, I was actually quite refreshed um, and new to get this test business out of the way. Um, Paulie that summer had also been down to Lizard and back and so I was looking for and was also looking to get up to Scotland to get the trip completed. We spoke a lot and both agreed there was unfinished business and we needed to get it sorted. We planned another trip, um, but this time together um, to John O'Groats. Me on Donkey and Paulie on the Deville. Well he joked that he'd be team support. But then I thought, knowing my luck, it wasn't going to far off being true. We set uh, October to try our four-day attempt. Doing the whole trip on the 125 meant not going in the motorway. And that was going to mean a long trip and a quite a lot of extra work for Pooley. But he was adamant that it'd be a good laugh to go up together. So we fixed the date. Two weeks before we were due to leave, um, I went for a lesson and I got to a mod to one test the next day and the mod 2 a few days later, and I passed. Now two weeks before I was due to leave, I had a full licence, and suddenly there were serious possibilities to consider. We launched into a frantic search for a bike. I generally had no idea what to get. So with just over a week left to go, I went into checking every Transalp within 100 miles of me. I saw several, I started to learn what I needed to look out for, and how to inspect it properly. I saw a lot and many were actually really abused bikes. They had been through a lot and they were not in great condition. I really started to worry if I'd find anything, but then on one of my last punts in Stafford, I came across a 2006 with only 10,000 miles on it, in very nice condition, but just over 700 quid over my budget. It was crushing. I found the bike I liked, but it would be difficult to afford it. I called up my wife there to, and spoke to her, and it was going to be difficult. I walked around and considered a cheap high mileage XJ600, but it didn't have that comfort or feeling the Transalp 650 had given me. I felt down. I'd still not got that bike. I heard people are walking into shops and leaving soon after with a brand new one, but it just wasn't happening for me. I called the wife again and spoke to my dad to get his advice. After considering everything, a few minutes later, I got my things and I was ready to leave. I had just shaken hands to collect my bike after a service and I'll be back in a week. Woohoo! I couldn't believe how quickly it all changed in, in a few minutes. I sat in the car and called Pooley. Hey up, I've just seen a bike and I'm picking it up in a week, a few days before the trip. We are on. He couldn't believe it, how within the last few days I'd passed the test, gotten a bike and frankly neither could I. A week later I rode my new pride and joy back home. She was so pretty. I couldn't believe she was all mine and after a few hiccups trying to get some E5 I came back home, introduced my new bike to everyone and after a few photos packed her away. In the next few days were going to be manic with work but I thought I would definitely without doubt get a ride in every evening to get used to her before the trip. Well but plans never turn out that way. 
I actually wouldn't start her again until the morning I was meant to be leaving. The night before. I put many things once again into the living room. I had learned from my mistake from my previous tour and waited for the baby to go to sleep so he couldn't throw my helmet down the stairs again. I put all my things out and sent my picture to Pooley and to Instagram. I was now ready to go. I went to sleep ready to wake up in the morning and make a stress-free and clean start to the trip. I woke up early, went to the living room and I stood in stunned shock. We'd been robbed and they'd taken all my things. I ran in a blind panic to check the rest of the house. Wait a minute, nothing else has been taken and there's no sign to break in. I ran to the wife. Where, 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 where are all my things? She turned around and shot me a look. Stop making a mess everywhere and leaving your things all over the place. How am I meant to go to sleep early if you have to keep packing away all your things? Is it just not fair on me? My hand hit my forehead so hard I thought what was left of my balding head was going to fall out. I'm meant to be like leaving like now. I'm meant to be meeting Pooley in 30 minutes and I need to be on my way. Help me please. She shot me back a look and started. Uh, is I the bothered? Because the bothered I is not. Hark, there, the bothered angels do not sing because this is British Rail and that is not my department. Or well, something to that effect. She turned over and went to sleep with me in my Star Trek pyjamas holding my towel in disbelief. I called Pauly and I said, I'm, Mate, I'm going to be late. And I explained briefly what happened. He was already about to leave. He said, don't worry, he'll be waiting for me at the services on the A38. Just after 9.30, I was ready to go, and I got everything ready outside to put in the trans out. Well, I came in, I said my goodbyes, and went over to start Patita. Everything I had on there was totally essential, and I could not do without it. I started the engine, and saw I had only a quarter a tank. Uh, I'd forgotten to fill it up, but I would do that on the way now. I reversed Patita out of a parking space and three-pointed it, as I always had a donkey, and parked it up in preparation to go load my luggage that I'd left on the floor. As I turned around, I heard an almighty crash. I had parked her on uneven ground and she had gone over. I kicked myself and ran over in a panic to pick her up. Between the stress of trying to leave and the panic of this new calamity, I, I just couldn't move the bike. Um, I had to call my dad over to come help me pick her up. And then she wouldn't start. My heart sank. I could smell petrol now, and now I had a broken bike. This time I held a start for a longer period, and she roared back to life. Yes! I quickly bungeed on everything that I had and wedged myself in ready to go. I said goodbye to my dad and just left. As I turned out of the driveway, I suddenly felt all the weight was on one side. As I tried to correct it, it fell over and I was trying to jump out the way, but it pinned my leg to the wall with the bike. I screamed as waves of pain shot through my leg. Sugar, sugar, sugar. Now, seriously, come on. Saddlebags are so going to take the piss out of me. My dad came running over in a panic after watching me crash my bike twice in the backyard before I'd even left the house. He was now looking really nervous and I could only imagine him thinking, what is he doing? What is he going to get himself into the next few days? It wasn't broken, but it damn it hurt. But uh, thankfully it wasn't enough for having me cancel my trip, there and then. I did not want to let Pooley down. He'd taken his last annual leave to be able to do this trip with me. And I wanted to do it so badly after my last fail. I sat down and I put my feet up. And I admitted to myself I really needed to calm down. And I was only going to make more mistakes 
if I didn't put my head into a better space and focus my breathing. If I wasn't feeling right and ready in 30 minutes, I would have to make a difficult decision and cancel. There was no point in killing myself or even worse, harming someone else. It was time to look at the bigger picture. I opened my eyes sometime later and got a cup of tea and prepared myself. I would reload the bike, test it by going around the block and see how I felt. I would have to be honest with the outcome as I couldn't put others in danger and leave Pooley having to deal with everything all on his own. It just would not be fair. Well, there was always next time. So I unloaded the bike and got back on. I felt nervous to try again. It was painful, but stiff, and I could still change gear. I went round the block and nipped into the car park and practiced with a few training maneuvers and did a few drills. After a few minutes, I was feeling much better and confident that I could do this. I went back home, loaded up and went and came back into the car park and tried the few drills and slow riding just to get used to the change in weight and I felt much happier and sure of myself. I was finally ready to go. I called Paulie and left to a meeting point. I arrived around 11am, so two and a half hours late. So much for my punctuality. To be, give me his credit, Paulie had been an absolute saint in all this. Not a word of complaint, and when I got there, noticing that a few bolts were missing, he, we got them fixed up and redid my luggage to make it more balanced. I was quite worried that he might be annoyed, I mean, I would. But I think the steady, slow flow of cappuccinos for the past few hours had kept him going. And at this time I joked that now his blood type must be double O cappuccino. As a nickname, I have named him two cappuccinos poorly. It had been an ordeal getting to this meeting spot. We still had four more days of this. As we got moving, I finally felt excited. Things were starting to move and I was going to John O'Groats with my mate. It was so going to be a laugh. End of part one.